hope everyone has freshened up ap after the snacks and uh, i know it's overwhelming with a lot of variety of technical talks over here by a lot of uh, experts and uh, i hope you're looking forward to our talk as well so we uh, are today here uh, to to talk about kubernetes in ml and mlops as well what we are will be covering today is like what exactly is mlops challenges in mlops how kubernetes comes into the picture and uh, how you can use how exactly you can use kubernetes uh, into the mlops pipeline what are the benefits and then we'll look into the uh, some open source tools which helps uh, use kubernetes uh, with mlops uh, next okay i have it so we'll start with my introduction uh, myself anuja khatode i am currently working as devops engineer at numblebox.ai uh, we are we have an uh, end to end mlops pipeline platform uh, and i am also uh, working as ambassador at solo.io before that i worked in tcs as system engineer and uh, i love to contribute to communities open source and interact uh, with uh, uh, open source enth enthusiasts and uh, like i like to write content about cloud native devops and uh, kubernetes uh, landscape as well i'll uh, give uh, mike to rohit to introduce himself yeah thank you vinuja namma chennai so how are you all Mumbai people will be like more loud than this. How are you? Ah, uh, I know it is 5:55 or 6 p.m. Right? So still you are here. So it is lot. Like I feel too glad like you are here attending our talk. <laughs> still you have this much power. So thank you for that. So uh, introducing myself, I am Rohit. Uh, you must have seen me or not seen me in giving the talks uh, in Kubernetes world, Istio Service Mesh, and Cilium, EBPF, that kind of technologies. So I am the person who are a lot active in the application networking background, community background, and DevOps technologies. So uh, introducing myself, I am developer advocate. Uh, I worked at uh, Solo. So today is my last day at Solo. so that's how uh, my journey till now i worked as a mlops engineer i worked as a devops engineer i have uh, like community background also i am the organizer for kcd mumbai as i am showcasing there <laughs> so also devops days india will be happening right so uh, i i am sure you are looking forward to it so i am organizer for that also so going forward let's go and see uh, you know like what is mlops anyone here yeah what is mlops devops just for application devops is the life uh, but devops is the culture no it is just uh, you can do for anywhere and something so some word is right for sure like as you can see it is nothing but uh, engineering disciplines uh, disciplines where which just uh, just aims to like unify the ml systems with your devops things like uh, you are working you are helping the data scientists so they can work development and develop operations together to solve their automations to solve their uh, daily pain like they are just sitting and uh, doing the stuff daily they are coming and checking like if their pipeline are working nice if uh, training is going nice or not so that's why mlops come into the picture like you can automate the things you can build the pipelines you can do the various stuff so what actually you can do what are the challenges we will discuss today so if you are data engineer if you are ml architect if you are data scientist kind of thing so today you will enjoy this talk so as we can see uh, data engineer so what a data engineer do right he works with the data he clean, uh, like he loves to play with the data so as you can see data acquisition then business owners and your clients just wants like uh, to uh, provide the business metrics to the uh, and then you just get it and uh, use that eda then you get, uh, get that stats and load it to the system then you train the model you do the stuff but then it becomes a pain of the data scientist he just doing this uh, model deployment training he gets the error he again goes back he again train the model again gets there again goes to pop, uh, previous step uh, why i can feel that because i am i worked as ml ml engineer previously in the r&d team so i was just like sitting weeks and months just by like training the models and and meanwhile just 
training the APIs and stuff, so that's why I go, got bored also. But then I come to know like there is some kind of a thing exists which is DevOps. So if you are ML architect, you will love to use the DevOps as like where you can uh, do the risk assessment, you can play with the uh, model performance analysis. If you have the ML knowledge, you will firmly get this uh, terms knowledge for sure. But if you not, it is some kind of a uh, runtime thing uh, you, which you are playing around the network, right? If you are DevOps engineer, so that is here in the machine. But uh, as we go forward, if you want to containerize your ma machine, machine learning models, if you want to uh, also scale your models, if you want to set some pipelines in the machine learning, so that you can do, uh, do in the machine learning uh, MLOps. So data engineering plus DevOps, because it solves that use cases. Same comes under the DevOps plus data scientists. It is nothing but uh, if data scientists love to play with uh, metrics, right? They are getting the metrics and they are solving their use cases, getting the errors, then they again checking the logs kind of thing. So that's how the, it solves the use cases of the data scientists. So as we move forward, common and I know it is old, old is good, but so as you know, one does not simply uh, simplify put ML models into production. It has a lot of steps and also this is the common thing, right? You are, <laughs> you have made the model, it is working fine, but once you put in production, users will like just creating the support tickets for you. <laughs> so uh, as we go forward, challenges are, there are a lot of challenges, right? Scaling ML workloads. Uh, so how uh, you have like uh, ML workloads uh, as you're playing the machine learning models and all, right? So you want to scale the system. So how you can do it? You can do it normally for sure, but here MLOps helps you. Uh, so how Kubernetes? So our today's talk is Kubernetes in ML, right? So let's come into the picture for the Kubernetes. Kubernetes is someone who will help with that, and uh, my friend will tell you like how how this thing work. Another than that, containerization, dependency management. So there are a lot of problems to containerize the machine learning models. Uh, it is really pain point. So that's where the uh, challenges. It is one of the big challenge. Then one of the challenges, ML infrastructure uh, complexity, right? So you are dealing with different type of infrastructure and it increases the dependencies, in increases your cost, increases your, uh, what we say, uh, infrastructure capabilities, right? So there comes into the picture of this challenge. So there are a lot of challenges, right? Then model versioning, you are dealing with the different versions of models and reproducing it, so that is one thing. So you know like what I'm talking about versioning, then Git will come into the picture and all, right? So. Uh, then data management and sharing, yeah, sharing, uh, like sharing is, as you can know, like uh, containerization, Docker. So Docker loves to share with, uh, so there is one kind of a popular meme, right? Uh, I guess Solomon Hayek's did that, like if uh, it doesn't work on my container, uh, my system, like how can I share with the manager and all. So that thing, machine learning models can also be shared. So other than that, there is a monitoring and observability. You have, you, so as data scientist pain point, right? So that is one of the use case. And data scientists sit for years to just uh, play with one model. And I'm not joking, it is true. Uh, ask any uh, popular company in the ML, they are like, this is one of the use case. And then CICD for ML, you can create the uh, pipeline and various things, right? So ML pipeline creation is really tough. So if you want to add, uh, let's say, scalability, resiliency, and these things, then it gets a problem. So other than that, security compliance, you should have some uh, machine learning model uh, security, right? There are a lot of uh, security issues. Like there can be, there is also, uh, there is no mutual TLS connections between the uh, ser uh, services you are planning in the machine learning models, right? So a lot of things are there. Kisi Mahan Purush ne hai. So, they say it's like, uh, you, you can use the Kubernetes for MLOps, but as you can see, it requires a lot of knowledge, how to scale the machine learning applications, then it requires planning, tooling, best practices, but we are not here to share the best practices and everything, right? We're just giving the picture, like how you can use the Kubernetes in MLOps and ML. So as I look forward, uh, my uh, co-speaker will tell you on the more things. So as of now, almost everybody in their talk has explained what Kubernetes is in a very brief manner, but in the perspective of how we can use Kubernetes in MLOps, not exactly what Kubernetes and all. So basically, we all know that Kubernetes is a container orchestration tool, and uh, we can, uh, like, you know, 
automate the deployments, manage the deployments, scale the deployments using Kubernetes. So we all know that it's a very robust infrastructure uh, Kubernetes provides for distributed system and it makes the best fit uh, for MLOps to deploy ML models on Kubernetes. And it also has declarative approach, like uh, we, we know what we want and we'll tell them and uh, Kubernetes just does it. So uh, moving forward, we'll, uh, we'll talk about why exactly Kubernetes only. So basically, uh, we've seen that Kubernetes uh, provides uh, a lot of features and it gives robust infrastructure and it, it is like, uh, it, it has been booming uh, since a lot of uh, years and uh, it's known for its like uh, powerful uh, orchestrator. So basically, uh, why uh, ML models uh, should be deployed on Kubernetes is basically it gives containerization and containerization gives a consistent uh, infrastructure for ML models to deploy. Like it shouldn't be uh, like we are deploying ML models on a particular container, uh, particular system and we want to ship it to some another, we'll, we don't have to recreate, right? There, there comes containers. So that is why it, so there's no need of saying like it works in my machine and it works in my container. So. Yeah, and it, 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 it is cloud agnostic. Like you can deploy Kubernetes on any cloud. It is uh, cost efficient as containers. Uh, we can manage the CPU and memory for containers uh, uh, as they are lightweight containers. It does not take much uh, CPU and memory. And uh, every uh, big cloud uh, present uh, in this ecosystem provides managed services for uh, Kubernetes so that we just have to go to them and tell them that we, are, we want to use Kubernetes and they'll give uh, managed services for Kubernetes. And uh, also like it, it is resilient, like it gives uh, fault tol tolerance and everything. And we'll see more of the benefits uh, in the next slide. So f first and uh, very important factor is scalability. We all know that uh, whenever uh, we want to, we hear some news or like we know there's a sale or something, we directly go to the applications and bombard it with requests and everything. At that point, Kubernetes handles the scalability. So, and also like there shouldn't be always horizontal scaling or vertical scaling. Right, there should be a need. Uh, what what exactly we should do? Should it be horizontal or should it be vertical? So basically, uh, Kubernetes does that uh, for us, and uh, it has auto scaling feature with which can uh, manage the uh, replicas number of replicas. Uh, maybe we want to increase or uh, just scale it down. Uh, and also, like, uh, we can manage the resources uh, with Kubernetes, like there is resource uh, limits attribute present, like how much uh, we want to limit, how much we want to give it to. Uh, and uh, yeah, obviously containerization for ML models, like if we want to port, port our one model from one container to another, it gives you portability, right? So if, you, if your ML models are already deployed on Kubernetes and we want to port it, port it to some different cloud, uh, we can do it easily with the help of Kubernetes. Um, and resiliency, yeah, it, is, uh, it gives fault, or in, fault tolerance and uh, it comes with uh, monitoring applications, with, like we can deploy uh, monitoring tools with Kubernetes. Yeah, monitoring and observability, right? So we can deploy Prometheus, Grafana, or whatever tool we want uh, to monitor all of the Kubernetes applications. Uh, CI CD for MLOps actually means that whenever we are updating model, uh, we will not every time go and manually deploy it to production, right? So we'll, uh, we have to have a pipeline whenever the pipe model is uh, updated or some modifications are done, it should automatically go to production. Security is the topmost concern, like it, uh, uh, Kubernetes comes with uh, uh, a lot of security options for ML models. As we know, the ML model uh, have a data which is very valuable. So it basically gives, uh, it comes with RBAC, it comes with port security policies. 
and uh, secret management can be done uh, with uh, manifests and uh, we can use a lot of uh, external uh, walls uh, within kubernetes as well and like we've seen uh, all of these benefits like how kubernetes can be used uh, where can be used and exact so now we'll exactly see how kubernetes uh, Use can be used and uh, executed in the uh, Kubernetes uh, YAMLs. So basically, there comes a in scenario which is an affinity and an anti-affinity. Affinity is basically the ability to constrain the pods to uh, to be on a particular node, to be uh, to be like you know a pool of node, like if we want a model, uh, for a model we want a particular GPU, we cannot uh, deploy all the nodes with that GPU, right? So we'll create one node only with that uh, GPU and we'll make that pod to be deployed on that particular node only. See, it constrains the nodes that can receive a pod by matching labels of those nodes. It, how it does that? It has, uh, it does because of the labels. Like we have to put the same label on the node which we are putting on the node for that, uh, which we are putting on the pod for that pod to be on that particular node. And uh, in the, that is the. Uh, attribute actually where we can use node affinity and we can uh, give uh, a lot of uh, values over there. So it's basically, you will say it's uh, just like node selector. What node selector does is, it only allows for the labels, but in affinity, you can, I'm sorry, but in affinity, uh, you can give a lot of extra values over there, which is uh, very customizable. Uh, it's not uh, limited, like just like node selector. And uh, there are actually two types of affinity. I forgot to say that earlier. Uh, it's node affinity, which is like uh, we have to give matching labels to pod and a node for pod to be on that node. And uh, there's this interpod affinity and anti-affinity. What uh, difference between these two are is uh, like pod affinity is between node and uh, pods with uh, matching labels, but pod interpod affinity is basically you, the pod will go onto that particular node only when the matching label of the pod, uh, of the other pods uh, are uh, already available over there. So there is a node, there are already a lot of pods on, on that node. So a particular pod will go that on that node only if the label of the pod is matching to the already present pods. And uh, you can see the, uh, uh, it also gives like pod affinity and pod anti-affinity uh, attribute uh, when if we want to uh, put it into the Kubernetes deployment uh, YAML file. So basically uh, how all of this happens is uh, whenever like uh, 15 people are, if 15 people are using some service, so uh, if one, pe one person is trying to access it, the other 14 people should not wait in line, right? So the it has to be scalable for the other 14 people to use it. That is why all of this uh, Kubernetes and MLOps can be integrated. Uh, and uh, I'll give uh, Mike to Rohit to tell you about the open source tools. Yeah. Are you still awake after this so much technical thing? <laughs> so, uh, I know, like, uh, st it is really <laughs> technical stuff, words and all and all. I also don't understand sometimes. But yeah, if you want to try it out, if you don't want to put a lot of efforts, so yeah, we have the open source things and cloud native tools which you can use and make your life easier. So as you can see, uh, this is the DevOps tools. Uh, like, I, I tweet a lot of things on the, de uh, like, Twitter. Uh, like, you can uh, check it out if you want. But other than that, as you can see, if you want to try it out, how you can integrate the DevOps in the machine learning and all, these are the tools, all the other tools. To give the simpler approach, so if you want to try out the CI study, you can use the Jenkins for like just 
uh, there are a lot of examples I will give for sure, like, but I don't have the time. You can reach out to me anytime. But if you want to set up the CI CD, yeah, there is Jenkins just connected to uh, Git for the versioning and train your models directly from the Docker file or something. It is easy to do. Uh, then you have the uh, other things like uh, there are data, uh, data pipelines you can create, there are uh, ML flow is there, there is a Q flow is there. We are talking about Kubernetes, right? So Kubernetes things you can easily do it using the Kubeflow for the machine learning. So you can try it out. Then there is a uh, flight is there, Kedro is there, Vento ML is there. Lot of things are there and lot of things are open source by them. You can try it out and also if you want to set up the hybrid infrastructure, if you want to send, uh, simp uh, like set up the ISC or something, there are tools uh, here. So you can click the picture for here or we will share the slides for sure, right? So uh, other than that, uh, so it is not just about like putting the Jupyter uh, notebook into the production and you have done the ML, uh, ML ops, right? So there are a lot of things to do. So you need to understand how the training works or something. It is not just like you can pick one tool and do the stuff. There are a lot of things to do. So that's why I put that chat GPT announcement, right? So <laughs> as we go, uh, so I know this will again blow your mind, <laughs> but try to bear me for a few seconds. So as you can see, uh, just giving one of the example, which is Qflow. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, like experimental phase is when you are creating the, uh, doing the data cleaning, then iterating the uh, various things into the Qflow. Uh, and then as you can see, uh, first you, uh, if you are machine learning engineer, if you are data, data scientist, you will do like identify the problem and collect, analyze data and you data clean, data uh, like processing and all and right. So then uh, you have the various tools for the ML algorithm, which is TensorFlow, one of the popular, then there is PyTorch and all. Uh, XGBoost, uh, I, I, um, like you have must ha heard it about. So then there is an experiment with data and model training, Jupyter Notebook you can add and you can add the code there and you can train it. So one thing is like, uh, so Ktape is the something which will help you to add this Jupyter Notebook into the pipeline and then you can integrate the Ktape, uh, Ktape and it will uh, do the uh, like automation for you. So that's why uh, like, which hyperparameters to add it, which not like, uh, like hyperparameter tuning is one of the worst thing if you, uh, you, if you are trained the model, uh, like you have to like, uh, when error comes, you have to like go and ch change the hyperparameters which are on this now. You don't know which is the wrong. You just have to like uh, do the trial and error methods and that's why Catip comes into picture which will help you in that. Then production phase is just like uh, once you transform the data, uh, train the model and then there is a different things to train. Then there is uh, serving, so you have to serve your model, right? So then there is a KF serving uh, which will help you, then there is a TF serving. So they are just, uh, uh, not I can say alternative or something, but they are just, uh, you can uh, try different thing, whichever will work out for you, that is the best for you. Then, uh, yeah, monitoring you can do on anything or you will have the, f so Qflow uh, dashboard is not for monitoring, but yeah, it also gives you different things so you can try it out. So there are awesome documentations on Qflow on GCP or Qflow on AWS, so if you are using the public cloud, I would definitely uh, recommend you to try it out. Then this is the architecture where like, uh, if you want to try out some use case, so it is just like Python code or something, then you are putting into the pipeline, uh, then it just uh, go to the Kubernetes, do the ATCD, uh, like there are a lot of things, right? But if you get the idea, uh, here it will help uh, you for the orchestration system, which Kubernetes comes into the picture, right? And then also machine learning, uh, so whatever data you get, you can uh, play with the data and integrate it here. Also, uh, there is a pipeline web server, right? It is nothing but it will help you to create the pipeline, uh, do the stuff with pipeline, and then you can go and connect orchestration for the future things, which people talk about like uh, GitOps and all, right? And then you can go and check the pods, uh, or you can see like if everything works out, then you will see the success, or other than you will just see like pod is reinitiating and things and things. So yeah, you can check it out. There are a lot of uh, videos on YouTube or something, but I can make your life simpler. So uh, these are just like opportunities if you want to go into the MLOps. But yeah, this is most important. So if you want to learn about the MLOps, if you want to try it out, and uh, if you want to try it out, like uh, what are the tools and all. So I have provided everything here. So as you can see, MLOps Redo Map. So this is one of the 
best road map in uh, world and is created by Indian Ganesh or something. Uh, then there is uh, this Huen who has created nice uh, MLOps community as well as uh, various things you can learn it about. And there is MLOps community for sure, then DevOps roadmap and all. So go check it out. And there is use cases also, one of the blog by me. Uh, I guess that's all for today. I guess I didn't bore you much. <laughs> but thank you for attending our talk. Thank you.